I made too much. Eat up. Eat up. The woman smilingly offers what is clearly the special sandwich I made for my daughter. This mom friend, who always ridiculed me for being a single mother, now shamelessly claims my creation as her own. How audacious. Not so long ago, it was expected for married couples to stay together till the end, and divorce was unthinkable. But times have changed. We live in an era of diversity where people freely choose their own paths. And the number of single mothers is rising. I'm one of them. However, I'm a single mother, not by divorce, but because I've never been married. My name is Mia, and I'm 30 years old. As mentioned, I'm an unmarried single mother. The reason is simple. The guy I was dating disappeared the moment he found out I was pregnant. I decided to raise my child on my own, without relying on him, and I've been doing so desperately. It hasn't been easy, but my daughter Eleanor has grown up healthy and strong, without any major injuries or illnesses, and has just started elementary school. Today, I'm at her school for the election of parent committee members. I arrived much earlier than planned, and the parents' room was almost empty. I checked the seating chart and found my seat. Someone was already sitting next to mine. Excuse me, I said as I took my seat. Please go ahead, replied the woman next to me with a warm smile. She looked elegant, with perfect makeup, hairstyle, and clothes, the epitome of a classy wife. In contrast, I felt a bit embarrassed about my disheveled appearance having rushed here on my bike after work. I regretted not having the time to freshen up my makeup. As I was thinking this, the woman next to me spoke up. Are you Eleanor's mom? Uh, yes, I am. My child talks about playing with Eleanor. Thank you for that. Oh, is that so? My child doesn't talk much about school. Thank you as well. I've always been a bit shy and not great at small talk. But the woman, named Grace, kept the conversation going with her friendly demeanor. She seemed to have many mom friends. We ended up being elected to the same committee and exchanged contact information to coordinate future activities. During our talk, I learned that we lived in the same neighborhood. Up until now, I've been so focused on work that I never had the chance to make mom friends, but I thought she might be my first one. A few days later, after work, we met at a local cafe to talk about the upcoming school event. Today, like always, I came straight from work. I pedaled my bike furiously to reach our meeting spot. She had arrived at the cafe before me and waved at me with a smile when she saw me. Sorry I'm late. I sat down opposite her, looking at me. Wow, you're dressed quite impressively today. She chuckled. Coming from work, so sorry about that. Really? You say that out loud? I was slightly annoyed, but laughed it off. What? You work? I thought you were a housewife like me, since you're on the committee. Can't make ends meet on just your husband's salary? Taken aback by her abrupt rudeness, I decided there was no point in hiding the truth. I'm an unmarried single mother, so... Upon hearing this, her beautiful face twisted into a sarcastic smile. It was so brief. I almost thought I had seen it wrong. Really? No husband? That must be tough. I heard over half of single mothers live in poverty. Is your family like that too? Poor Eleanor. Do you even buy her proper clothes? I can give you some of my child's old clothes if you want. Her sudden change of demeanor left me speechless, and she continued. My husband works at a well-known company around here. I don't need to work like you. Since you can manage work and committee duties, why don't you handle everything? I'm super busy, you know. So that's settled then. Thanks for taking care of it. With that, she shoved a pile of documents at me and hurried off. From then on, she seemed to look down on me completely, always trying to one-up me. Spotting me after work, she'd taunt. You always look so interesting. I have to be presentable all the time. It's hard. I envy you, not having to care about your appearance. And she persistently follows me around. Is that so? I didn't want to bother engaging with her. I tried to leave, but she blocked my bike's path. 
You live in that apartment, right? Isn't it risky living in a wooden building nowadays? It might burn down. And Eleanor, is she bathing properly? She looked quite dirty today. You can't neglect basic hygiene just because you're poor. My daughter is a tomboy, always running around outside with boys, getting dirty. I didn't mind her comments about me, but involving my daughter was too much. My daughter lives a normal life, thank you. I'm busy, excuse me. I had no time for such a person. I squeezed past her and quickly pedaled home on my bike. She seemed to be saying something behind me, but I pretended not to hear. Today, there's another parent-teacher meeting. Facing her again is a dreary thought, but it can't be helped. I'll try to ignore her as much as possible. I made sure not to arrive too early, tidying my hair and makeup just enough to not look disheveled, and then headed to the school. I arrived just in time for the meeting to start. As my presentation time approached, I prepared my materials. I had prepared everything, so naturally, I thought I'd be the one to present. But right before the presentation, she took the materials from me and stood up. Mia is busy, with work, so I took the liberty of preparing everything. If there are any mistakes, please feel free to point them out. She began speaking with an air of ownership. Around me, did you do this all by yourself? That must have been tough, right? I could hear voices praising her. I wanted to object, saying that it was all my work. But unlike her, with many mom friends, I barely knew anyone there. In such a situation, I couldn't bring myself to speak up. After her presentation, Wonderful, that was very clear. Thank you for your hard work. And you there, I understand you're busy with work and new to the committee, but please make sure to cooperate. The chairperson of the meeting said, The chairperson had no idea. It was all my work. She didn't do anything. She just took credit for my work. I wanted to say that. I'm sorry. But all I could do was apologize. She was looking at me with a sarcastic smile. On the way home from the meeting, unfortunately, she and I were heading in the same direction. I confronted her. Hey, why did you lie and say you did everything? That was my preparation, wasn't it? But she showed no remorse. You're so noisy. It's not a big deal. Besides, someone like you, with hardly any acquaintances, wouldn't be trusted presenting. That's why I graciously took over for you. You should be grateful. Usually, she would block my way and not let me leave. But today, she hurried off ahead of me. After that, she continued to push all the work of preparing materials for the parent-teacher meetings onto me and took all the credit for herself. I asked her multiple times to help, but it was like water off a duck's back. She didn't listen at all. One day, while at school for an open class, I discovered she was spreading rumors that I was harassing her. She says she's busy with work and dumps all the committee work on me. Even when I say let's work together, she tells me, you're a housewife with plenty of time, you do it all. She's always angry with me, saying I'm underestimating her because I'm a housewife and she's an unmarried single mother. She appealed with a near tearful voice, convincing the other moms with her actress-like performance. They comforted her. You're doing great. She's probably just jealous of you as a housewife. The whole unmarried single mother thing is a bit... It seemed most of the parent committee believed I was jealous of her being a housewife. After that, I was blatantly avoided and gossiped about at committee gatherings. Maybe if I had been better at navigating these situations, this wouldn't have happened. But honestly, with my busy work schedule and the infrequent parent meetings, I didn't have the energy to focus on these relationships. I just needed to get through these uncomfortable meetings for one year. Then, the season for the sports festival arrived. Thinking about her and the parent committee relationships made me uneasy. But my daughter had nothing to do with that. She was looking forward to the sports festival. I'm excited too. I'll make sandwiches for us. I cheered her up. On the day of the event, I woke up early to prepare her favorite sandwiches. 
I got a little too enthusiastic, making several cute sandwiches. Make them cute! My daughter had requested, and they turned out colorful and appealing. I even took pictures. There were probably enough for about eight people. I had fun looking up cute sandwich recipes online and ended up making too many. But my parents were coming to watch their granddaughter in the afternoon, so the three adults could probably finish them. My daughter was thrilled. Wow, these sandwiches are amazing! I'll share them with my friends. She was happy, which was good. During the sports festival, there were various tasks for the committee members, leaving little time to relax. Despite securing a good spot and laying out a leisure sheet early in the morning, I hardly sat down. That woman seemed to work hard, but was actually doing nothing, leaving all the heavy tasks to me while she took on the easier, more visible ones. I overheard her complaining again. Mia is dumping all the work on me. It's so hard. But I decided not to care anymore. After a morning of hard work, both my hungry daughter and I were ready for lunch. However, I realized the large bag of sandwiches was nowhere to be found. I had kept valuables with me, but left things like the sandwiches on the leisure sheet. Mom, let's eat the sandwiches quickly. Sorry, the sandwiches are gone. Maybe someone accidentally took them. I asked around, but no one knew where our sandwiches were. Mom, I'm hungry. Where did our sandwiches go? Seeing my daughter almost in tears, I had a bad feeling. I hoped I was wrong, but... Sorry, I'll be right back. Wait here for me. I left my daughter with an acquaintance nearby and headed towards her. I made too much. Eat! Eat! My bad feeling was spot on. She was acting as if she had made them herself, offering our sandwiches to other families. Wow, did Grace make these? So delicious. You're really good at cooking. Moms around were praising my sandwiches. It's nice to have your cooking appreciated, but in this situation, I felt nothing but anger. Oh, it's nothing. I just prepared them last night. They're really simple. Being a housewife, I thought I should make an effort. She humbly bragged. Come on, what a thing to say. I hadn't cut any corners. These were sandwiches I had painstakingly prepared with trials the night before and had put so much time and effort into. Looking at her surrounded by many moms and having fun, I made up my mind. The usually shy me was gone. I had to get back the sandwiches I made with all my heart for my precious daughter. Hey Grace. I approached her, trying to stay calm, with a smile. She turned around, looking troubled for a moment, before quickly returning to a pleasant smile. Mia, you must be tired. Why don't you join us for some sandwiches? She offered me the sandwiches I made without any hint of remorse. From the angle only visible to me, You know what this means, right? Don't you dare speak up. Her eyes seem to be pressuring me, but I'm shy. I'm not good at reading faces or communication. I thought I had overcome my shyness, but I take it back. I revert to my old self, depending on the situation. Oops, that's our sandwich. I left it on our leisure sheet and it went missing, but here it is. I announced loudly, ensuring everyone could hear. I'm not good at communication, so I don't know the right volume. My loud voice drew the attention of the moms around us. Her face screamed, shut up, be quiet, her face seemed to say. But I don't care. I'm just stating the facts. No way! What are you talking about? This is my sandwich! But it must be tough not finding your sandwiches. Don't worry. There's plenty here. You and Eleanor should have some. She stood up, pretending to comfort me with a pat on the back. Don't you dare say anything more. But her touch seemed to convey. However, I'm not an empath, so I ignored her implied message. No, that's definitely our sandwich, right? I even have a photo as proof. Look, 
here. I took out my mobile phone and showed the nearby mom the photo of the sandwich I took this morning. It was unmistakably the same sandwich in front of us. What does this mean? Why do you have a photo of this sandwich? The moms who saw the photo on my phone voiced their confusion. Her face turned pale. It's not like that. It's just a coincidence that the contents of the sandwiches look similar. I didn't steal anything. I made this. She desperately tried to explain. The crowd seemed unsure who to believe, me or her. I decided to play my final card. Can you check the bag the sandwiches were in? My daughter's name is embroidered on it. Name? She let out a surprised squeak. A nearby mom unfolded the bag and checked. Eleanor's name is embroidered here. Everyone froze at the mom's words. Of course they would. She, who had everyone's trust, was caught red-handed, distributing someone else's sandwiches as her own. Amidst the excited atmosphere of the sports festival, only this corner felt chillingly cold. Whispers started. Grace took Mia's sandwiches, didn't she? Oh no, I ate quite a bit. I always found her behavior a bit odd, but I never thought she'd do something like this. I decided to expose all her past misdeeds. That's right. It's not the first time. Everything she claimed to have prepared for our meetings was actually my work. Just like these sandwiches. Seriously? You only have two people in your family. Why make so many sandwiches? I was just helping you eat them, thinking you couldn't finish. Be grateful. Grace, red-faced and shouting, had her true colors exposed. The moms around were astonished. The children had already been taken to another place by a perceptive mom who sensed the uneasy atmosphere. How thoughtful. It's none of your business how many sandwiches I bring, right? Be quiet! You're an unmarried, single mother, showing off with these fancy sandwiches. People like you should stick to eating discounted bread, alone. Being an unmarried, single mother doesn't warrant such treatment. Her words were harsh and unjustified. I was about to retort when someone gently tapped my shoulder. When I turned around, my father was there. I thought you'd never come back. You were quite loud. I could hear you from the other side. Dad! Surprised by Dad's sudden appearance, I felt relieved, tears welling up in my eyes. But more shocked than me was her husband, having blended into the background until now. President! He exclaimed louder than I had. Dad was also surprised. Ah, oh, it's you! Our grandchild goes to the same school, huh? He said. Yes, my dad is a somewhat famous company president around here, but that has nothing to do with me and my daughter. I have no intention of taking over dad's company and work at a completely different one. Her eyes widened. What? He's a president? Who? She stuttered nervously. President of our company. Did you steal the president's family's sandwiches? Apologize now. No. I didn't know. It's not my fault. Mia is to blame. What about my daughter? Her and her husband's arguing stopped abruptly at Dad's words. Let's stop this. Today is about the children and their sports day. Let's enjoy it. The moms around agreed, suggesting to end the quarrel. Later, we got our sandwiches back. And as an apology, even though they didn't know, other moms gave us more sandwiches. Our original eight servings became about ten. My daughter happily shared them with her friends. I ate until I was full, regaining my energy for the afternoon. During the afternoon events, moms who had previously avoided me started talking to me. I'm sorry for what I said before. You've had it tough. Let's be friends in the parent committee from now on. I replied with my best smile. Yes, thank you. I look forward to working with you. And I responded with just the right volume. Meanwhile, everyone seemed unsure how to interact with her. They kept a cautious distance. She glared at me, 
but I pretended not to notice. Sometime after the sports day, another parent meeting was held, but she wasn't there. The moms gathered around me, eager to share gossip. Grace went back to her parents' home after a huge fight with her husband following the sports day incident. Apparently, she was misusing family money and having an affair. There was even talk of divorce. The man she was involved with is married, and his wife is demanding compensation. She's become a shut-in, unable to leave her house. They shared this with gleaming eyes. She was busy with an affair while claiming to be busy elsewhere. Using her husband's hard-earned money on an affair was just disappointing. Her daughter continued to attend school, remaining good friends with my daughter. Unlike her mother, she's a kind and polite child, apparently raised mostly by her grandmother. I understood why she was growing up so well. I worried if she'd be sad without her mom, but apparently there was no need. Her husband has been more lively at work since they separated. He couldn't speak his mind at home and was suffocating, said my dad who was visiting us. That's why her husband seems so invisible at the sports day. I hoped all children could grow up without worries. Watching my daughter and dad play happily in the garden, I couldn't help but wish for a happy future for all children.